What's up guys, welcome back to Seth Lee Fishing. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to connect your outboard engine to your electronics on your boat. That way you can get all your engine information and all your gauge information all on one screen digitally on your electronics. That way they're super accurate, super easy to read. So let's uh, go ahead and get into it. All right guys, so real quick, I'm running Homingbird Electronics. I have uh, the Helix series. I actually have one 900 uh, series Helix over there, and I'm running Mercury, a 2013 Mercury uh, 200 Optimax, the Pro XS. So this is a smart craft compatible motor. But before you go, if you don't have a Mercury, if you have some other brand, or if you have an older Mercury that's not smart craft compatible, don't worry, I'm going to show you a universal way of how you can still get all your uh, engine information digitally to your electronics. And if you don't have a home and bird, um, you can still watch this. And uh, if you don't have a Helix too, if, if you have the Apex or the uh, Solix, this will also apply to you, all the low ranch guys, Garmin guys. Most of y'all um, will plug straight into the NEMA network. And I'll tell y'all when we get to that point, like what exactly you'll need. So let's go ahead and start with my uh, setup real quick. So to start off, um, if you have a SmartCraft compatible engine, you're gonna have a plug somewhere on your motor like that. And it's gonna have this little cap on the end. This is your uh, terminator. You can see that right there. So you're gonna pull that terminator off and then you're gonna have to buy this blue data cable. This is a Mercury part. I'm gonna have all the parts and everything listed in the description down below this video. Um, it's about 90 bucks. Uh, you can get it on eBay, Amazon, whatever. Um, you want to make sure you get the blue cable that has terminators on both ends. So you can see it'll have this yellow uh, sticker that says terminator right here um, on both ends. So you want to double check before you buy one of these blue data cables that has terminators on both ends for this setup. Okay. Um, and then you can see it's also labeled uh, two engines. So, you know, this plugs into the engine. Um, but then, uh, so make sure you get that cable. And you might already have this in your boat if you have a um, like a Merc monitor or an Eco monitor uh, system installed. So just check before you go buy one. And then on the other end, uh, this is just your system link plug. So if you have system link gauges or you want to buy some, you can look into those. They just plug straight into that. Um, you don't have to worry about these. I know the purple is for um, ignition power, but you, you're not going to have to worry about that. Um, this is the male to male adapter. So you got to have this. This plugs into your blue data cable and then it plugs straight into your Mercury gateway. So this is the Mercury gateway right here. Um, it converts your smart crafts, which is this CAN um, data right here to NEMA 2000 data. Okay. So on this end, you're going to have a NEMA 2000 cable um, and you're going to plug it into one of your NEMA 2000 uh, connectors. So you're, you're gonna want a NEMA backbone. Uh, you can get a NEMA starter kit. I'll put one down in the description again. Uh, that's what I have. And I bought one extra connector because I plan on adding another thing in the future, which I won't get into right now. But um, so our, our Mercury gateway is plugging into this connector. We have a terminator on this end. You have to have a terminator on both ends. And then this right here is our power. So you gotta have power for your NEMA backbone, and uh, I just have it ran to my battery right there with alligator clips for the Tom Bean. And then this connector right here is going to my, um, this is the first homing part, homing bird part you have to have. This is the homing bird uh, Ethernet to NEMA 2000 adapter. Um, if you have a Apex or a Solix unit, you do not need this you actually have a NEMA 2000 port directly on the back of your unit. So you can take this right here and there'll be a little spot on the back of your unit for NEMA 2000 and you can plug that straight into your unit. Same thing for the low rinse guys and uh, Garmin guys. Um, Y'all are just going to plug this straight into your unit. Most of the Garmin's and uh, low rinses are like that. Um, but if you have a Helix or a older 900 series Hummingbird, you're going to have to have this adapter, okay? And then um, if you have multiple hummingbirds connected and uh, like networked through an Ethernet system, 
you probably already have this box. This is the five port ethernet switch. Um, and my ethernet to NEMA 2000 box is just running straight into one of these ports. And then I have all of my units uh, connected in the other ones. But if you wanna just run one unit, like if you wanna run your um, engine data to just one unit, um, for the 900 series, right here, you actually have ethernet port straight on the back. So you can just plug that box directly into the back of your unit. But if you have a helix, however, um, you're gonna have to have the ethernet uh, adapter. I'll put it in the uh, link below. That way you can um, hook your ethernet cord up to it. But again, if you already have a network, if you already have units linked, you most likely already have that box. So you're not gonna have to worry about all that. All right, guys, I went ahead and hooked everything up. As you can see, I went ahead and mounted my uh, Hummingbird, the 900 series Hummingbird on my dash. Um, so I have my power on and uh, my power for my NEMA 2000, I ran to this accessory switch, which my um, ethernet box right there is also, uh, can you do that switch? So as long as I have power, like with this switch on, then um, everything's gonna be connected. So uh, I got my two hummingbirds on. Um, also, you wanna make sure your engine is on uh, or you won't actually get any engine data. Your Neiman 2000 will be connected, but you won't be able to display any engine data because there won't be any, obviously, because the motor's gonna be off. So I have the motor just in the on position right now. Um, so let's go to our data screen here and we're gonna go to one engine view. All right, and so I've kind of played around with this a little bit. I kind of have everything set up. So I have my tachometer right here, um, my water pressure, which I have water pressure here anyways. Uh, I have my trim gauge right here. Um, I have my engine hours, my engine temp, which is very important, especially with these motors. Um, and then right here, my fuel and my trim, um, I found out that my motor had, doesn't have a digital trim sender, so I gotta add that to make my trim work on here, which isn't a big deal. It's like super easy to install and it's only like 40 bucks, I think. Um, and then the fuel, uh, I have to buy the fuel harness. It's like a fuel paddle wheel harness for my motor as well. Um, if you need that, if you have the same motor as I do and like your motor doesn't have that on there, I'll put it in the link for you. But um, this will connect to my fuel sender from my original fuel gauge whenever I get that harness. And then it'll like give the fuel information digitally like through the motor or whatever and I'll be able to see it on the screen. And um, so then the helix view is a little different, not much different. I'll just show it to you real quick. The one engine view. So basically you have your tag is the same. Um, I saw my fuel, air, like you can customize all this. The only, the only thing I don't like that you can't customize on the Helix for some reason is this. It's only navigation uh, is the only thing you can put right here. So some kind of, some kind of navigation thing. Um, so I would use this one because I can put exactly what I want on there. Um, but like you can customize this so you can make this trim, water pressure, you can even make your RPMs. This stays your RPM, so you can't change this. That's always gonna be your tack. Um, and you can't show engine hours on here either, which is very odd, I don't know why, but you can on the older one. But um, that's pretty much it real quick. I'll show you some of like the things that um, you'll be able to see. So, and I'll show you how to change to, like change your um, readout. So you go to setup and make sure your unit is on custom mode and not angler mode. Um, and then you want to go to select readouts right here. And then uh, you can see it has like a little version of your screen. Um, so let's say we wanted to change this uh, to readout two right here. So you'd go here and then it has several different categories. It's like vessel depth, environment speed, system, um, engine, and wind. So let's just go to engine real quick, engine one, because we only have one engine hooked up. And you press this info on the helix, you're gonna press the check mark. Um, so it's, you got your RPMs, your fuel rate, which is what I have here, your gallons per hour. 
Um, you have oil pressure, oil tent, coolant pressure, which is your water pressure basically, boost pressure, engine tent, engine trim, and then um, let's see, if you go and select one of these two down the bottom, either four or five, it gives you the extra extra option to add your hours right there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all the uh, engine selections. Um, but there are a few other categories, um, like for your fuel or your oil tank level. Once I get that fuel harness, I'll have that. Um, like they'll be right there. Level one is your fuel. Level two will be your oil if you have the oil sensor um, as well. And then like you can add other things on here, like um, oh whoops, you can like add trim tabs like to your NEMA 2000 network, and it'll show you those. You can add like wind sensors. Um, if you get environment, you can have all kind of temperature system or sensors stuff like that. Um, you can uh even add sonars to your um NEMA 2000 system. Um, and then you'll have depth. Because you can't read any any of the information from your Homebird GPS or your Homebird sonar, you will not be able to view on the screen, which is kind of stupid. Um, but uh, earlier I mentioned I bought an extra connector for my um, NEMA 2000 uh, network, and what that's going to be for is um, I actually have a Homebird GPS right there, and the Homebird GPS is. Um, where they plug into the unit. So you can see I kind of have this one uh, taped right here with some electrical tape. It has a little pigtail coming off the end for NEMA 0183 or something like that. It's the old version of NEMA. So you can connect the home and burn GPSs up to a NEMA network. So I'm gonna make a NEMA 0183 network or whatever it's called. And then I'm gonna use a NEMA 0183 converter to NEMA 2000 to convert it to NEMA 2000 and then connect it into my NEMA 2000 network, which is what the extra connector is for. It's a whole lot of work. Hummingbird pretty much makes everything complicated. Uh, don't know why, but they do. But anyways, um, so then I'll have my depth, or not my depth, because it won't be a sonar, but I'll have like GPS and speed and all that stuff on here in my NEMA 2000 network. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything. Uh, real quick, I did mention earlier that if you don't have a SmartCraft motor or SmartCraft compatible motor, um, like let's say you have a Yamaha, uh, per se, then, um, I know Yamaha, Evinru, they all have different like harnesses, kind of like the Mercury gateway to connect your motor to, um, like the NEMA 2000 or whatever, but I honestly have no idea what all the stuff is. But there's a universal way that I could, you could even do it with this motor if you wanted to. You could do it with any older Mercury that has any type of analog gauges or anything like that. Um, I'll put a picture up on the screen right now of the product that I'm gonna show you. Um, it is a converter, an analog to digital converter. So what you do is you take all the wires that would send data to your analog gauges and they go in this little converter module and then they convert it to dig like a digital output that goes into NEMA 2000. So then you would hook that up straight to your NEMA 2000 um, network and it would give you the digital information that you can display on, the, on your units from your analog gauge senders hey that's just a universal way to do it it's super easy um and simple that anybody can do with any nema 2000 uh setup you with any type of electronics any motor um and you don't have to get super specific but uh i hope you guys enjoyed this video hope it helped uh helped you understand some things and uh, some of the information you're going to be able to display on your units. Um, if you enjoyed this video, let me know down, down in the comments. Or let me know um, if there's any other kind of tricks or tips for this that uh, I may not have mentioned. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch y'all next time.